Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I am Paul Chasu. And welcome to Endless Space 2 and my newest playthrough slash tutorial series 4. As you have probably guessed if you looked into the title of this video, the Vodiani faction. Now, if you are a newcomer to my channel, and perhaps this is the first video you have ever seen so far, well, then I need to explain to you exactly how this series is gonna work. First of all, the playthrough part is pretty self explanatory. I'm gonna play an entire game until its completion, it's that simple. As for the tutorial part, well, it basically means that I'll talk a lot during every single one of my videos and explain everything that I do. I'll tell you why I employ the strategies that I employ and things along those lines. So if you don't like talking and you just like action, this is probably not a place for you. If, however, you want to learn how to play Endless Space 2 perhaps a little bit better, this is a pretty good place for you. So I encourage you to stay if you're looking for just that. But without any further ado, let's click on the new game and set things up. We're going to be playing, as I mentioned, as the Vodiani. And the main reason why I picked this faction to be my first faction is actually pretty simple. It's because a lot of people are having some difficulties playing as the Vodiani because, well, that's how it usually is. The Vodiani are the most unusual, unorthodox faction along, among the four that we currently have available. They don't colonize planets, they instead inhabit massive arc ships. Like the one you can see over here, which you can just barely see the, a part of. That's how big it is. So they need to. You need to employ some different strategies if you want to succeed as the Vodiani, because playing them in the same way you would play, for example, the Cravers or the Lumeris or so forth. Well, first of all, you can't. Secondly, even if you could, it wouldn't work very well for you. Personally, I discovered something that some of you might not be fans of, but in my opinion, Vodiani are amazing warmongers. In fact, in some ways, on big maps, I would say that the Vodiani are better warmongers than the Cravers are, because Cravers are limited by their empire disapproval, their overcolonization disapproval. The Vodiani have no such limits. They don't colonize, they don't conquer planets, they just wipe out all life that's on other planets and move on, because they don't care. That makes them amazing warmongers. They also have much more potent middle game, I would say. And actually, early game as well, they are really good at rushing things as well. But Kravis can rush as well, so not necessarily. It's the middle game and, uh, you know, the longer wars that are important. Obviously, in this alpha version, and by the way, if you're watching this video many months in advance, I mean, many months in the future, I mean, this is a alpha version of Endless Space 2, just in case you haven't noticed it yet. Uh, we are still in early access by the time I'm recording this video. So while it might still stay relevant and the tips and, and strategies I give you might still stay real in a few months time, but maybe they will be outdated because of some big balance changes which happen quite regularly. So I don't know, but at least for a few months I believe this should be a pretty valid tutorial. I don't remember what I was talking about before. Oh yeah, the size of the galaxy. Well, the biggest we can go for medium is medium and I'm just gonna go for small size because I don't want this playthrough to last too long. It's just here to teach you how to play the Vodiani, not to showcase a very long game. That will come in the future. Resource abundance will be set to low because, well, I explained in my Introducing Endless Space 2 video why I like the low setting, I believe. The game difficulty, obviously endless. I mean, there's no point in not playing on the highest difficulty for our tutorial video. And in theory, the skull victory is turned off. In practice, at 1064, the game will claim that the person with the most score is the victor, but as of this patch, it will let you keep playing after it notifies that, well, 64 turns have passed and the score is uh, the winner, quote unquote, is selected. I don't care about skull victory, never did in any Forex game ever. I always disable it. And in this instance, even though it would technically speaking trigger, I won't bother looking at it and I'll keep playing afterwards until military victory. Now, by the way, we're also not gonna achieve the skull victory. I know, you may be thinking, well, if you cannot achieve skull victory as the Vodiani, what point is there in this tutorial? Well, to be entirely honest, skull victory, first of all, I hate the idea of it. Secondly, it really doesn't treat Vodiani right, because the Vodiani, they have very few population in their entire empire because they don't conquer they grow very slow they only have the Vodiani in their empire and it's a very strange type of empire to be entirely honest and it as such it doesn't reflect very well in score at all and i can almost guarantee at 1064 unless i somehow manage to conquer everybody by that point which is unlikely because of how big the galaxy is i will not have the highest score in fact i'll probably have the lowest score 
which will not change the fact that I'll still win the game several turns after that, don't you worry. Anyway, we're now in the game. So, what do we need to think about first? Well, first things first, while well, I still remember, we have our hero, while well, we listen to this wonderful song. Oh, I love the Void new theme. Sorry, I prefer the Quivers theme, but this is also awesome. Actually, I like all the music in this game, but let's not talk about that. Let's talk about this guy. So, your first hero is a Guardian, and a Guardian has a very, very useful ability over here called the Warm Time Nationalism. It's extraordinarily useful, especially for the Vodiani, because you will need a lot of production as quickly as possible. So we will need your first hero to be a Guardian in order to employ the skill to your ears. After we get that, we're gonna go for Aesthetic Sustenance, only one point of that, and then Optimal Operations Expert. For the time being, however, we need a flat bonus to industry as quickly as it is humanly possible, or in this case, Vodiani is possible, I guess? I don't know, doesn't really matter. Anyway, we're gonna go into our first system, have a quick look at it. It has, it's actually a pretty good system, and I'll explain why in a second. But first things first, we're gonna go ahead and assign our leader over here, so that he can start giving us extra 10 influence right away, which is his flat bonus from being a guardian. Now, as for why the system is actually really good, it's because it has more than one planet that is easy to colonize. We obviously start on a Terran planet, and the steps are, well, steps. They're not the easiest thing to colonize, but we also have a tropical, and tropical is actually quite easy to colonize. We just need one technology, and why not we don't, why won't we go into technology screen right away? Because over here, with the first thing I'm gonna research, the very first, is rare air force which allows us to colonize tropical. Why is that? It's because as soon as I unlock it in two turns, it will effectively double my population in here, which means that I'll have two. In practice, I'll still have one bit of population, but that's how the Vodiani work. You don't live on planets, you live on your motherships. And each point of each population on your mothership works every planet equally. Which means that if you colonize, if you only have one planet to colonize on your system, and you have a mothership of one person on it, I mean one population, then you work a single tile, which is not very good, even though Vodiani are absolutely amazing at Fitzy production. But if, for example, all of these planets were colonizable, I would instantly have four population work in the system, even though I technically speaking only have one on my ship, which is uh, a very important thing for the Vodiani players to remember. You, it doesn't matter that you have little population, it matters that you can colonize a lot of planets so that you can utilize your population to its highest possible extent. That's what makes you so powerful, that's how you can stay competitive with other empires despite having less population. Let's start off by queuing up drone networks. We're gonna need that because, well, food is important, obviously you want second point of population as quickly as possible, which will quadruple our population once we get the rare air forms. Uh, but we additionally we need a lot of industry production because we need to start making warships very very quickly I'm afraid. I mean I say I'm afraid I personally am excited because I'm a warmonger But you might not be if you're not war warmonger I'm afraid Vodiani are not necessarily a faction for you because it's very difficult to place them if you are not re willing to be a warmonger anyway Let's go ahead and explore some curiosities. Oops, I misclicked, but it doesn't matter. So, first things first, this is absolutely an amazing start. I haven't seen a start this good in a long time. So, the planet that we're going to colonize quickly, after I check out some more curiosities, one second. More tr holy balls. <laughs> okay, this is getting to be a ridiculously good start. I... Uh, wow, okay. I did set the resources to low, right? I'm not just imagining things. Well, either way... This is absolutely beautiful, because we start with a planet that we're about to have colonized in two turns that has three different luxury resources. This is absolutely amazing, because as the Vodiani, you need to le you can level up your systems a lot, because, well, you won't have a lot of them. As Vodiani, you make a tall empire, which means that it is very important for you to make systems that are highly leveled up. And in order to level up your systems, you need luxury resources, which, as it turns out, I have a lot of. So... This start is absolutely amazingly good, and I almost feel like I don't deserve it, but I'll take it. I had so much bad luck in almost all the videos I record, that I'll take a little bit of good luck I can get. Alrighty then, let's go ahead and dismiss all of those notifications. I'll let you perhaps read this now, because I cannot skip this and I don't have the time. You can read that if you pause the video. And with that done, I'll go ahead and have a quick look at the Senate, because 
I might forget to do this, but it is important that I tell you how to do this. <laughs> because I just need to warn you, my memory is awful, okay? But the moment you have enough influence, you should probably go ahead and uh, activate the excess time through because it does give you extra dust it's not a lot of dust but it, it would take you some time to get access to a better law and this one is nice and cheap and it does give you some extra dust which you will need pretty quickly for reasons that i'll explain in a second now with that out of the way i also briefly mentioned the federation Tap, which is actually another source of power for the Vodiani. I really like Federation myself because it increases your industry production as well as, well, we don't really care about red reduction of over colonization penalty. We care about the extra industry production systems, which is the main thing, the thing that gives us a lot of power. Combine that with the fact that our starting hero is also a Guardian, which can give us extra industry production, and I think you can start to see the route we're gonna take as a woman because we're gonna spam so many ships no AI can possibly withstand our wrath and fury so there is that there was also one more thing I wanted to mention in this screen but I seem to have forgotten what it is like I said my memory is awful so I may forget things along the way I'm sorry for that uh, I can't do anything about it I'm afraid I was just born this way anyway with our sh wait 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 I think I'm... wait, I need to pause the video. I need to remember what it was. I think it was important. Okay, literally the second I paused the video, I remembered what it was. It was about the Ark ships. And uh, I suppose there's no reason not to, sh to explain this to you now. What a lot of players also forget about is that, well, you live on the Ark ships, right? But those are actual ships. You can deattach from your system and move around. And while I'm sure you have figured that out for yourself already, there's also one other feature that is very important for the arc ships. It's the fact that you can redesign and retrofit them at will at any point in time. So let's have a quick look at our arc ship. Right now, it is equipped with a missile and a gun that we cannot really hear. At least I can't. Strange. Anyway, alpha is alpha. Maybe it's a bug or maybe I just cannot hear it for some other reason. Maybe I'm deaf, going deaf. Either way, this is our current ship design. But what's very important are those five modules you can see in the top. Almost Warship, Almost Tyre, etc, etc. These are extraordinarily important because they allow our systems to operate at increased efficiency, which, if we combine the f that with the fact that our population is absolutely amazing at everything we do, turns out to be a very big increase in FITSI production. And we ne will need that in order to stay competitive. So what I intend to do with my starting Vodian ships is, first of all, I dis disable the engines because they take out our necessary space, I add in the industry production. Hey, get over here. And uh, I mean, since our first world is still growing and we need to, to grow quite quickly, I'm actually gonna put food production, uh, food production resource over here. We will need the exercise. We'll need a lot of technologies very early on. That's why I keep it on. As for dust, we will need dust in order to continuously retrofit this arc ship according to our needs. That's why I leave it in. As we proceed along the game, I'm going to modify those uh, modules fairly frequently. But that's something you need to remember about. Now, I'll play the design and as you will see, it will cost me quite a lot to retrofit this ship. In Right now it's 201 dust. But there is a trick you can do to make it cheaper. If we look at the arc ship again, you can uninstall all the other things that you don't need on it, such as defensive modules uh, like armor or weapon modules. Apply the design changes again, now we only have the production modules, and look at that. Now it's only gonna cost us 136 dust in order to retrofit the ship. That's not that bad actually, it won't take us very long to get to that point at, at all. Now of course you could make the argument that well, our ship is not completely defenseless against the enemy attacks, but this is every game, no attacks are gonna come, and even if some kind of random pirates show up and tried shooting at the arc ship, it has over 5000 HP, it won't fall to a single volley from an early game ship, it will take way more than that, it's a big ship, I mean our entire nation lives aboard this ship, it can take a bit of a beating, so don't worry about that. Later in the game I will change you know, the design so that it does have some defensive capabilities, right now however you don't need them whatsoever. Anyway, with our ships, we're gonna scout around a little bit. Now, when you play as the Vodiani, it's very likely that you are not as lucky. Holy pulse, I'm so lucky. I did turn things to low resources, right? Because this is ridiculous. Okay, anyway, 
As the volume, you sometimes are not very lucky and you don't start with an amazing stunning system. You don't start with another amazing system that actually has what plants with strategic resources right next to what you have. And it's a tropical as well. And it has titanium and hyperium. I feel so guilty right now. <laughs> In multiplayer game, I would be saying sorry to all my competitors. This is the best that I can imagine. Anyway, let's say you're not as lucky. What do you do then? And your first stunning sh ships don't discover any new systems. They discover just fast nothingness because the systems are far away. Your setting system is garbage. What do you then do then? What kind of technology do you go for? It's actually fairly simple. In my opinion, in a bad start situation, it's usually best to go for Xenobotany first. Why? First of all, it unlocks Tundra colonization and maybe, just maybe, you will find some kind of system somewhere down the line that will have Tundra plants on it. So there is a random chance that it might be useful for that. Of course, it's only a chance, but there is other thing that makes this technology very tempting for me to go for as a first tech if your starter is bad. And that is the extra speed on your ships, which will be very important, especially for your mother ships, but also for your war fleet. I always grab Xenobotany at some point when I play as the Vodiani and if my starting system is bad and I see no other systems in my first turn, I just grab Xenobotany as my first research and it usually tends to pay off very well for us. But still, when you play this game for yourself, on your first turn you have to make the decision. Can you make good use of a new planet or do you not have any in your vicinity and you want to go for Xenobotany? As for the reason why I don't go for other upgrades, well, it will take our mothership some time to make our starting upgrades, by which I mean the the drone thingies and the cerebral thingy, reality, whatever. And we all need both of them, trust me, especially the dust improvement right now. And the science actually as well. We, you need both of these almost equally. But uh, if you were to research anything else, I mean, you s wouldn't have the time to make it, right? And you won't even know what it is that is most important for you as well. Maybe it will be happiness because maybe you have some really bad plants to colonize. It's very rare for the volume I need, but it might happen. Maybe you will need to have titanium because you'll find titanium cells nearby, or maybe you won't find any of that, but you'll find a planet that has three colonizable planets, then you want to rush the university because it's actually a pretty awesome for you in that situation, and followed up with intergalactic supermarket to level up your systems. You never know, maybe you'll find no plans whatsoever and you're desperate to do something, then you go for efficient shooting pretty early on to get your war fleet ready as quickly as possible and save yourself. It, it is very important for you to judge the situation you are in. I can only give you some rough examples on how I look at things. I cannot necessarily guide you all the way through every single one of your playthroughs. You need to make the decisions yourselves. Now, I know it has been almost 18 minutes and I just reached 10 too. I did warn you, I talk a lot. That's what this series is all about after all. Now, as for my ship at Kratz. Well, I'm just gonna move back and keep scouting because it's a dead end of a system, but it's still an amazing system and it has a... Tr I mean, I have never, when playing this game, ever had a star that was as good as this. And I played this game, well, I haven't played it for 100 hours yet. I think I'm quite a bit below that, in, actually. And as for the reason why is, well, I was abroad for, oh, oh, what, a month or something? Before the game was released, so I didn't get to play it as much as I wished I did, and now I was busy in real life. But still, I played it for definitely over 50 hours, I don't remember how much exactly now. So, yeah, and I never had a start this good as any race. This is the best start I ever had. That's why I'm almost tempted to restart this playthrough because I'm doing a little bit too well for a tutorial series. But at the same time, I actually kind of like the groove I'm having. It feels good to be recording right now, it's hard to explain it, I just I just enjoy myself right now very much. So I will keep recording even though I really hate how well, how well I'm doing, I really do. I prefer starting poorly because then I can give you more value in your tutorial by teaching you the worst case scenarios and this is, this is the best case scenario, I'm very sorry for that. But I don't want to restart it, I'm having too much fun. Anyway, if you want to read about our faction quest, you can pause the video and read it for yourself. Our starting reward is 50 Hyperion, which is actually fairly useful. It does give you access to a very, very nice ship later on down the line, by which I mean this particular ship, which I'm gonna use a lot, that's a fair warning. Now, there's that out of the way, we're gonna have to kill some pirates in order to finish our quest. No hurry! I mean, we're not in any rush, let them sit there for a while, they can also kill some of our 
uh, enemy empires for us in the meantime and we'll finish them off in, in some time. There's no reason to delay with this quest, sure, but there's also no reason to rush. Anyway, are there any curiosities in Kratz that I could explore? There is... Uh, well, there are, but we... No, actually, no, we can explore them as soon as I get the wheel over there. So let's do that. I do want to discuss curiosities, because curiosities can give you an instant bonus in whatever dust, science, influence, strategic resource, whatever it is, it's gonna be useful for you. Another system right next to our standing system. Seriously, can I st please stop being so lucky? I'm, being, I'm doing a little bit too well. Okay, at least the system is almost incolonizable. I mean, it has allied systems. That, w that is era free for us. It has a lava. That's, uh, yeah, that's, we're not gonna colonize that at all. Cold gas giant. Again, not something we can colonize. But still, not in early access version at the very least. Alpha version, whatever you want to call it. But it's good to know that there is a system over there for, I don't know why, but it's good to know it. As for the next research, well, let me drink some water because my throat is parched as I ponder about my next research. Mm. In fact, there is no need to queue it up right now. Let's have a quick look at our system. And as you can see, we have two population already, even though we technically speaking only have one. And our people are ecstatic as well. Why are you ecstatic again, exactly? Uh, wait a second. No, seriously, why, why, why are you exactly? I think it's a bug. I'm pretty sure I'm not supposed to gain extra 55 approval from a planet. Unless there is something that I'm seriously missing, but I'm pretty sure there isn't. The definite uh, Oh wait, wait, wait. Resources. I'm missing I'm forgetting about the resources. But they don't give you a bonus in approval. Why do I have so much approval bonus? Unless the resources do give you an approval bonus and they just don't write about it. Which I actually didn't notice before. That's uh, I mean the resources the electrical resources did have some meaning in Endless Space 1 and Endless Legend. I haven't realized that they do in Endless Space 2. Maybe they don't. Maybe it's a bug that I'm ecsta ecstatic. <laughs> maybe this game is trolling me by giving me the best start ever. Or maybe the resources actually do give you bonus. I'm sorry, I don't know. I never noticed this kind of situation before. Either way, our next technology, I mean technology, upgrade is definitely going to be a cerebral reality regardless. And as for the next research, let's have a quick think, shall we? So, we're doing pretty well, we're gonna be gathering some luxuries at a fairly steady pace. Holy bows, we already have a lot of them. So, what kind of technology do I want as quickly as possible? I think I'm gonna go for Xenobot here anyway. Or, or, or I'm gonna go for non baryonic particles, because this will give me some extra science production. And as the Vodiani, you do need to have a lot of technologies unlocked as quickly as possible. There are some other things that are important for me, like Harbor PAC, so I can start unlocking some heroes as quickly as possible. And of course, efficient shooting, I also need to get as quickly as possible so I can get a good, you know, fleet to attack the enemy. But right now, I don't even know where the enemy is. Now, there is a certain feature that they have not even mentioned up until this point because I did not have the time, and that is the essence. But in order to explain the essence, I'll need to have some victims, let's say, so that will have to wait until later. For the time being, let's just say essence is something that's very important for us. Alright, let's explore the turn. What do we have over there? We have... Okay. Okay, this is... Okay, yeah, okay, mm-hmm. I think we're... we have breached the point of my best start in Ella Space 2, and I'm reaching the point of best start in any Upreduce Studios game ever. <laughs> Why? This game wants me to restart my video now. Holy balls. I don't want to restart it. I'm having too much fun recording it. I'm sorry. I don't want to restart it. I'm doing too much. I... Oh well, I'll just wreck everybody, I suppose. Anyway, as for this quest, I usually tend to choose the cattle option because it increases industrialist uh, ideology, which I find to be more important for the Vodiani. Either way, our next political party will almost certainly, in almost all cases, will be the militarists. But if something weird happens and it's not the militarists, I'd rather it be industrialists than ecologists. Also, we need the extra food way more than we need extra approval. Especially since, you know, our southern planet for some reason has a hundred approval. Which... <laughs> I'm so sorry! I did not mean to do this well. <sighs> I really feel guilty. Uh, anyway, you stay here and replenish your drones by making this guy sleep. He will notify me when he's got drones ready to explore again. Although, I almost fear to do so. Also, I can now go to my cell and enact uh, exercise typhoon law. 
I could have done this a long time ago, but whatever. It's not like I'm really in a bad situation right now and I really need that. <laughs> it's just gonna help me get ahead even more. Let's end the 10. I'll drink some more water as I ponder about the ridiculousity of this playthrough. I'm assuming the word ridicul ridiculousity is a word. It probably isn't. Yeah, let's explore. Well, let's see. That's atmospheric. I don't really care about those. Ruins are more interesting. So let's go ahead and have a quick look at the ruins. And in the ruins we found... Asteroids, of course we did. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I think it's an arid plant over there. No, it's a desert, so we won't even be able to ever colonize it. But hey, that's get get enough. <laughs> anyway, we find a clover fake. Now this is an interesting side quest, but unfortunately, I cannot afford to lose ten signs on Empire for ten tens in early game. Even though it will give me a technology, it's not worth it at all. I'm just gonna ignore it. We need our technology. I'm our signs really badly right now. Uh, here we leveled up and as I mentioned we're gonna go for one time nationalism because it's very important for us to start making things as quickly as possible and with that then we're gonna research efficient shooting. Why? Because we have reached a point where we will have more industry production than things to produce uh, when it comes to structures and we'll have nothing to do on our system and we'll waste our industry production unless we start working on our ships, which we have to do anyway, so we might as well grab them right now. As soon as we have that done, we're gonna go for interspecies HR, and after that is done, mm, we're doing extremely well on dust, so I think we go for, we're gonna go for hyper PACs, so we can get new heroes as quickly as possible. So there's that. All right, our fleet ship is waiting for new is waiting for new probes to be replenished, and meanwhile we have found Jayam. Now. I know this is a really, really cool cinematic view of planets that if you're a newcomer to this game, you're probably gonna look at this a lot. Unfortunately, I tend to skip it. I, it doesn't mean that I don't like this thing. I do like looking at those planet zoomers every now and again, but in my video, I'll always skip it because it takes too much time for recording purposes. Anyway, ice, ocean, and Arctic, that's, uh, I mean, a lot of food in one place. Too bad we won't be able to colonize that. I mean, at some point we will, but uh, I don't think I'll ever go there. I have way better systems nearby by me, which I'm in Kratz. So, yeah, no need to do that. Now, as for you, this sir, you're gonna work on magnetic food generators and so follow it up with sustainable farms. And actually, I just realized we still have sustainable farms to work on, so maybe instead of efficient shielding, I'll start off with interspecies HR and then go into efficient shielding. I think that's the way to go. Now, of course, you could say, hey, I could go for Xenology and Plasma Metallurgy so that I would start getting resources from Kratz right away because I need the Titanium and Hyperion, which in theory is true. In practice, I won't need it until Era 2 because in Era 1, you can access to specialized isotopes and stable isotopes, and that's all that you can get access to, which translates into better shooting and better... whatchamacallit? Let me quickly check because I forgot the name of the weapon. Uh, and it, oh no, you, you cannot have those weapons. Ark can have it. It translates into a better plasma beam. And plasma beams, unfortunately, I believe, are underpowered quite badly right now. Because plasma beams are extraordinarily powerful at close range, but they only fire at close range. By the time you get to close range, if you are employing a lot of plasma beams, you're probably gonna be destroyed. So, even though, sure, the damage they deal is pretty decent for, when compared to other weapons, but it's not decent enough, in all, uh, in all honesty. Sure, it's much harder than anything else, but keep in mind, this weapon only fires at short range. When we look at kinetics, they fire at short range optimally, but they also fire at medium range, so they can start firing much earlier. And the important thing about kinetics is that they also destroy the incoming missiles, or at least they have a chance of doing so, depending on how many kinetics you have. The missiles, well, I don't need to explain that. You fire them on your first turn, and if you have enough of them, you win the game before the enemy can fire back. Pretty useful weapon in its own right, even though it's easy to counter. And as for the lasers, they are kind of the jack of my tr of all trades, but they are also my favorite weapon type. They are very good because they can fire at the enemy before the enemy can fire back in many situations. They deal a decent amount of damage, but in return they get quite decently countered by shields, because they, the shields can negate a good portion of laser power, and additionally they also uh, are outshined by many other weapons on specific ranges. So. Yeah, all of those three weapons, they have, make sense, and they are very well designed, in my opinion. But those weapons have no niche. They really don't. 
unfortunately. It pays for me to say this. I mean, if you just employ a bunch of them on your ship, then the enemy is gonna destroy you with missiles. If you want your ships to go into short range, you will need slags in order to defend yourself from torpedoes. It's that simple. So, employing plasma beams is just asking for trouble. They really sunk out of a bath. Either allowing them to fire at short and also partially at long range, which makes a little sense that they wouldn't be able to fire at short range, at middle range then, or some kind of other change in the way they work, but right now, sadly, there's no place for them in this game. Which means that there's no reason for us to research the improved beams or via any of those technologies. The extra shooting is not very bad, but it's not very good either, so we're just not gonna bother. Let's end the ten. Wow, 30 minutes, but we have reached 10 6. We're picking it up. We're moving along very fast right now, aren't we? I'm being sarcastic, by the way. Anyway, uh, nothing happened this turn, so that was a pretty mediocre and boring turn. Let's go ahead and skip the next one. 10 7. Wow, the speed that we're going at. It's incredible. I almost feel like my hair is about to fall out from the wind resistance that I feel from my monitor. That makes no sense. Anyway, by the way. I need to mention something. If I talk too fast, too quickly for you, because I know my accent is pretty ridiculous. I mean, nobody has my accent. It's I don't know where I got my accent from. It's not my national accent. It's not any accent. It's just weird. So I know it sounds pretty hard to understand me, and I also tend to talk a little bit too fast. So please, I try to control myself, but if you notice in a video that I talk too fast, please, Say that in the comments, and I'll keep it in mind that, okay, even slower, even slower, I'm not in a hurry. I just always feel like I'm in a hurry, because there are so many things I want to explain to you guys and talk about, that I just instantly want to get them out of my system, and then my mouth isn't keeping up with my brain, and that's why I talk too fast. I'm sorry for that. Anyway, our new event allows us to find hidden isolated nodes. That's pretty nice. It saves us a lot of busy work. So, oh, and it's actually, okay, the Azalea node is quite close to us. We don't know what those planets are. Frankly, I don't really care too much because our sending systems are so nice, I couldn't care less. It looks like it's the only hidden node in the entire galaxy. I don't see any other anywhere on the other side. So, hey, that's, again, <laughs> yet another proof that this is the best start I could possibly ask for. I mean, this could be also a very bad system, but I doubt that it is. Okay, and I don't think there's anything else we can do at this point in time, except there's the Denakur little university. I don't know how to pronounce it at all. So, I can get sustainable farms in two turns, but I would much rather gain Denakur university in five turns rather than six, because it's a ridiculously powerful improvement. And usually, unless something good happens to you like it happened to me, you're gonna need the extra approval. I mean, you maybe won't need it, but you will always have a good use for it. Besides extra efficiency on your population of planets, that's very good as well. So let's dismiss that. And uh, there's nothing else to explore in here, is there? Okay, let's keep moving as I drink some more water, because I'm parched. So there's something here and in here. Okay, so I have plenty of curiosity to discover, but I do want to see what kind of system this is. So I'll wait in here and I'll launch a probe in this general direction and see if I can reach the system and see how good it is. Maybe it is amazing. You never know. Also, I completely forgot. I did tell you. I forget about things, didn't I? I did tell you that. I forgot to redesign my ship, which is pretty bad. And by now, I don't think I need the extra fuel because I'm about to grow my population anyway. So let's instead give ourselves... Let's think, what do I care about most right now? I think science for the time being. Only for the time being, later on we'll need more industry production. Actually, no, we need industry production right now so I can make the university as quickly as possible. So let's do that. And in fact, I'm tempted to put some kind of defensive module on my ship now since I have excess dust anyway and I didn't up the retrofit my ship in time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put highest level slags on the side of the ship so that it can fire back at the enemy pirates and it can also shoot down missiles if the enemy uses them. And that's good enough. I'm not gonna put anything else on the ship for the time being. Although I think the design we have, the original design, also had plating over here. So I can just leave it here. No, no, no. Let's, let's see how much it costs right now. To ride off the ship, it costs 182. I could put some extra plating. I don't really care. Let's do just that. Okay, now the ship here is way less defensible. 
but it is gonna give us a lot more uh, a lot more fitzy production which is rather important alrighty then you do sir launch the probe that you have in this direction and after that is done head over to James system also it's also ridiculous we haven't found our enemy yet now this is the only thing I could pot possibly complain about. I haven't found any enemy or minor faction empire, which means I'm not gathering any essence, which again I'm gonna discuss more, more I'm gonna talk about more once I have the opportunity to do so. Right now I didn't have... Oh! Our neighbors are Cravers. Finally a challenge! Cravers know war and they're gonna be... They're the toughest faction to meet in early game. I'm happy. Because Lumeris, you can crash easily. Sophons don't even want to fight. Cravers, <sighs> me and them are alike. It's gonna be a fun fight. It's gonna be a tough one, but I'm gonna enjoy it. Finally! Oh yes, a challenge. That's what I was like looking for. And this is them. Ocean, our desert, tundra. Tundra is easy to colonize. Ocean, not. Desert, impossible. Our, difficult. Alrighty then. I could find the ship if our stupid. I'm not that stupid. I'm gonna go ahead and over here there are pirates, they're gonna find my ship, I'd rather not have my ship destroyed, I wanna leech something. I really, really do. Okay, political survey, well, that doesn't matter for us, we haven't given our people much of an opportunity to change their live views, as of yet. And I think that now it's a decent point to end this video. Uh, it hasn't been the longest video ever. But I don't want the first video to be too long, actually. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. In the future video, we're probably gonna cover the essence and my strategies for finding a war. Because, yes, we're about to be at war with the Cravers. And I'll probably be the one to put the kind of war on them. Or maybe they'll be first. I don't know. Either way, thank you very much for watching. And before we leave, I have something to tell you, actually, which is rather important. The first thing is... I forgot what the first thing was. Never mind. The second thing, however, is about the official forums, the Games Together forums for Uploaded Studios. Right now there is a competition going on on these forums, and it's uh, the last stage of the competition for designing the community-designed faction, the 8th faction that will be put into Endless Space 2. And right now we have the competition which determines what kind of questline and what kind of lore the... Uh, the upcoming faction, the Unfallen, will have. So please go ahead and have a look at all of these submissions. My submission is in there as well, but please don't just vote for me instantly, even though just because you like me. Vote for whoever, you, whichever submission you like most, right? Although I will be happy if you at least read my submission. That's what I would be very really happy if you did do. I think I'm doing pretty well, although I haven't checked the thread in a few days. I'll probably do it soon after this video is. I'm done recording this video because I want to know how I'm doing. Last time I checked, I was second, and uh, which is probably actually pretty good because right now we're not competing on which submission wins and gets into the game. We're voting for which free submission submissions get into the next stage of the voting, which will then determine who gets into the game. So anyway. That is in the future. I just wanted you to know that this kind of competition is going on. The link to Amplitude Studios forums is always in the description of my video, so there is that. Anyway, it was Pancho, also, also known as the Mighty Mix Spammer. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you online.